going to join this session today. This is the fourth online training event about feedback fruits as KFPM is piloting the platform during this academic year. The previous three sessions focused on specific feedback fruits pedagogical tools. The first session was about interactive documents. The tool allows requiring students to study an online doc document with features such as question cards and discussion threads, which makes apparent student level of engagement with the material and this encourages students to engage with the material. Similarly, the interactive videos was the focus of the second sessions. These tools can be in invaluable as KFUPM is making efforts to adopt active learning strategies such as flipped classroom. A number of faculty members offering the course on an active learning models have implemented these feedback through tools in their courses. Last week, we also had a session on peer review and assignment review tools of Feedback Fruits, which are meant for students to receive feedback on their work from their peers and from the teacher. Today's session is about two tools designed to facilitate the formation of student groups and providing insights about the level of student, student collaboration in groups, uh, which can help identify free riders. As has been in the previous session, Julia Waisoka will be introducing us to these tools. She is the implementation manager at Feedback Fruits. Uh, Martin Mortier is also going to join us, uh, who will be able to answer your questions. So you can post your questions in the chat of this Zoom meeting, and he will be able to respond to your questions. So Julia, this is all yours now. Thank you very much, Nate, and good afternoon, everyone. It's really mine and Marta's pleasure to host another training um, within this audience. So thank you so much for taking the time, your afternoon, to join this training. Uh, as Janet uh, introduced I'm, us, my name is Yulia. I'm the implementation manager together with Marta. Our partner manager will be hosting this training, and this is our agenda for today. Um, as mentioned, our training today is focused around all things group work. Uh, thus, we would like to start the session with introducing the value of the group work, but also stressing the challenges of it. Next, introducing you to feedback fruits, as I believe some of you might not join our previous session. After this, we will move into describing the tools and that we'll be focusing on today and having a demo in Blackboard. We also plan to have a hands-on component where you can experience the activity as a student so you know how students can provide feedback to each other and evaluate the group work. Um, we also plan to show you how you can set up independently a feedback for its activity in your Blackboard so that at the end of the session um, you'll be able to independently create it yourself. We welcome any questions. So in case you have um, any comments or so, please use the uh, chat. Uh, Marta will make sure to answer uh, all of your inquiries and questions. So let's start by talking why the group work is important. Uh, I'm sure that most of you know so many benefits uh, of the group work, and I'm also sure that uh, all of you already try implementing it, um, but it's really important to once again stress the value of it since sometimes it might be forgotten. Um, group work primarily focuses on cultivating students' skills, that's durable skills, that really ensure that students can cultivate critical thinking, communication, also collaboration, um, as well as the creativity. Uh, so we can really ensure that by um, taking part in a group work, students can really focus on um, cultivating a variety of skills. As you can see on this chart here, um, there are a lot of those uh, that we can help students maintaining um, and also really scaling in case you're going to create a group work. But of course, it does come with challenges, especially if you have uh, a large cohorts of students. It might be very challenging to first organize them and know um, what students, um, what type of students going to work best with each other. Um, there's also a component of um, the manual uh, creation of the groups in the LMS. Um, working with a lot of the institutions, we know that it's also very hard to know what students want and who they collaborate um, 
with the best. Um, so really ensuring that students have a good schedules uh, that they can uh, collaborate uh, with together. Also ensuring that they match in terms of skills and backgrounds. Um, the consideration for implementing group work goes also further as there are a couple of uh, considerations to take into account before organizing uh, peer evaluation within groups. And that's, for instance, what type of group you're going to um, implement and whether this is going to be a formative or summative uh, assignment. Um, with experience, from our experience, we know that it's um, really well for students to uh, cultivate the intra-group of evaluations so that they can check on each other's uh, contributions and dynamics throughout the course. Um, so that not necessarily this activity has to be a graded one and sort of an important review, but rather a time for them to check on how they have been collaborating uh, and give each other a formative feedback. After this, you can implement a summative assessment, ensuring that they also receive a grade on how well they have been collaborating. So it's really crucial to sort of approach this group activity not as a, um, a compulsory assignment, but rather teach students that this is an essential skill that they will also cultivate outside of classroom. And in this training, we do want to introduce you to two of the tools that can help you facilitate both of these components, meaning assigning group members, ensuring that you have successful groups, but you also save time on creating them. That is using the first tool, the group formation. And second, implementing intra-group evaluations, ensuring that students have a place uh, to review one another and that you also have insights into free riders and dynamics within their groups. Before we dive into the tools, um, I do also want to stress that um, all of the tools that we have co-created um, have been designed with our higher ed institutions and partners. Uh, we've been working uh, with our uh, partners uh, for over 10 years on ensuring that group work among many uh, and other challenges that instructors are fa facing, I've been met and that you also receive solutions at hand that you can implement. Therefore, making better teaching easy to organize. And this is the entire tool suite um, that's available um, in your LMS already. Um, as mentioned, we had already previous trainings focusing on the collaboration and engagement, um, as well as some of the tools focusing on peer feedback. So I would like to spend one minute on describing these two baskets so that you know in case you're interested in um, discovering other tools that you can go into Blackboard and try them out and discover them. So within the basket of 15 tools um, in our learning system, you will find two primarily groups that can help you with uh, specific challenges. If you're looking for uh, introducing assignments focused around feedback and assessment, I encourage you to look into the purple tools that you can see on the left side. These tools ensure that students can give feedback to each other, but you as an instructor can also be a reviewer and evaluate students' performance. You can also find here tools such as the self-assessment, helping students with their critical thinking, as well as helping students with their writing. All of the tools have an AI component that can help students writing their evaluations and have certain suggestions. Um, and I do encourage you to also try it out in your uh, LMS. Uh, the second um, bucket is the um, are the tools focusing around collaboration and engagement, so all things interaction. In case you would like to encourage students to um, interact more, maybe you only have asynchronous courses that are online, I encourage you to look into the interactive study materials where you can submit deliverable and ask students to, ask, to answer questions and discussion prompts. In this packet, you also find tools that help you with uh, facilitating discussions, also uh, include quizzes and survey questions, um, as well as um, in based learning where students can uh, complete a quiz individually and as a group. So all of these are already available and also come with templates and journeys that you can easily implement into Blackboard. So there's no need for you to start everything from scratch. And moving to our premise of this training, today we'll be focusing 
primarily on the group member evaluation. This is also the tool that we'll be focusing on in our hands-on training. But before, I would like to first discuss the group formation, so how you will be able to streamline and create uh, successful groups. Just before that, I just want to mention that all of the tools are already implemented in the Blackboard, so we do not go outside any external platform, and that does give you the benefit of pushing grades directly into Blackboard Gradebook, also synchronizing uh, groups that you created uh, from Blackboard, as well as remind students about the learning steps using the calendar deadlines. You can also reuse your activities as well as uh, use rubrics criteria that you've previously launched in other assignments. So in order to uh, for us to start uh, looking into forming the groups, I'd like to cover the group formation tool. The premise of the group formation is simply uh, enabling you creating successful groups, but really saving time on this. Um, Martin and I, we often in our conversations heard that uh, groups are being formed manually and that this is um, quite a time consuming task for uh, many instructors and teachers. Um, so therefore, this is uh, the tools why we created this, ensuring that you have options to basically make this process a bit easier. And how it works is that um, you design questions that are important for you based on what you want to uh, create groups, and you decide whether students need to be paired up based on similarities or dissimilarities. After that, students take on this quiz, they provide their answers. You can stipulate which uh, questions are more important than others. After this, uh, the program suggests you the groups. And at this point, you can still do some manual adjustments of the group. Um, after this, you will be able to launch it into Blackboard. And you can use this tool either for a feedback fruits assignment or for any other activity. I would like to take very a few minutes to show you how the tool looks like into Blackboard. We won't be focusing more on this tool in this training, so I just want to ensure that you know uh, how that can be facilitated. I am currently logged in into the Blackboard environment, so you can see how Feedback Fruits um, shows in the Blackboard iframe, and I'm logged in as an instructor. This is our uh, view in Blackboard course, where I would like to create some groups for my engineering course. I have um, 15 students, so it's relatively small group. If I had 500 students, that would work exactly the same and the tool would be even more applicable. So from my end, um, what students would see is simple instructions after which they will go into a survey. I've launched three very simple questions, encouraging students to provide answers, after which I will know how can I pair students into groups? I have included three questions. What's the GPA of the students? They would need to provide answer on this. Next, what days are they available um, for group work on this project? Couple of options here, as well as what's your personality type um, to include here? And prior to this, I also gave students a quick quiz to answer and provide questions. All of these questions are based on how students answer differently. So I do really want to have um, the different groups that are quite diverse with dip different backgrounds, because in my belief, this is how um, this project gonna work best for those students. So after they provide answers, I will here see the suggestions and I will be able to configure my groups. As you can see, the system immediately provides you with suggestions. Um, in this case, I wanted to have three groups. Um, so I will have students paired uh, into those. The algorithm will do its work. Um, after this, I will be still able to make some suggestments. At, um, maybe I want some students to uh, move into other groups. After this, you can click form groups, wait a few seconds, and those groups will be synced back into Blackboard. It will create a new column in the Blackboard, uh, which you will be able to use for either feedback fruits or any other assignments as mentioned. So this is how it works. Uh, at the end of this training, I will also show to you how you can um, easy access this assignment and get a template that you can implement in your course. In case there are any questions on this, 
please uh, put it in the chat. Uh, we'll make sure to answer it. Now back to our presentation. After you have the group successfully uh, created, um, it's time to implement the group work itself. And this is when the group member evaluation comes uh, into place. This tool can really help you improving the group work, um, letting students to evaluate their teams. How it works is simply you create a criteria. In our case, this is um, a rubric. Um, you make this assignment available to students and then students have to go into this activity, perform a self-assessment and evaluate their peers. Afterwards, you'll get a lot of insights into the group work. One of the most beneficial one is the insights into the group dynamics in case there are some outstanding different um, dynamics such as uh, free ridership, maybe some students uh, are over performers. As you can see on this picture here, some students might also be low performers. Now, in case you have 100, 200 or 300 students, this might be very difficult to spot. So this uh, tool provides you with those insights um, based on which you can um, basically know how the group perform and maybe address it with a student. Mm. This tool also helps you with, of course, enhancing students' feedback skills. You will have option to enable AI coach that can um, help students with their writing and also promotes accountability uh, as students will also read their feedback and have a chance to grade how useful the feedback was to them. Now I would like to move on to um, show to you how the um, tool works as a student. Um, the activity I have at hand is the same activity in a few minutes you will um, complete as a student. So I encourage you to pay attention and know that this is exactly the same activity you will do in just a second. I'll just quickly change my screens. And we are once again in our Blackboard environment. In this activity itself, I am part of a group. Um, you will have a diverse number of group mates. In my case, there are uh, two students apart from me. Um, I can read the instructions, then I can move on to completing a self-assessment, after which I would need to review my peers. This assignment also complete a module where students will read the received feedback and have opportunity to comment um, and get back uh, to this evaluation. This activity is a summative one, so we included grading. Once all of the modules are completed, the grade will be released to students. So in order to start off this activity, I encourage you to read the instructions first, ensuring you know the value and also all the steps that need to be um, taken. And next comes the main part, which is giving feedback to myself and the peers. As you can see here, I currently know I have to do the self-assessment once I go click on reviewing. The module with criteria will open. This is the criteria that my instructor uh, set up before. Um, so I need to evaluate myself based on certain parts that I did in my project, such as the listening skills, respecting others. I need to evaluate if I was punctual to meetings and also what my, was my level of the self-motivation. I can simply do it by just choosing the right level with optional comment. You will see that below I have the feedback coach I've mentioned earlier that can help me writing a constructive, good quality self-assessment. Self In this case, I can say... <laughs> And of course, students can write um, yeah, quite an extensive evaluation or not. You also have the chance to include some tips um, so that students have more guidance. And I can do it further. It's also possible for students to include an audio recording, uh, record a screen, maybe attach the file to make their feedback more meaningful. As this is a self-assessment, there is no need, of course, but you can do that for the next evaluations. Now that you perform the self-assessment, you will see that this is completed. And with the panel above, you can click on next, and then you would need to start another review to evaluate your peer. 
After a few seconds, the screen will load and I will be able to evaluate my other peer. I'll just update the screen very quickly. And that will open and that will open this uh, module where I can see my peers. So I'm going to click continue reviewing and I can evaluate my peer on the same criteria. In the assignment that we will have, you have quite extensive groups. You are uh, grouped in a, with other six or seven people. So we only will ask you to perform the review for one of the peer just to see uh, how it feels. In the red received feedback, you will see your self-assessment as well as reviews um, that you got from other peers. Of course, you only see that once you get the review. So that could also be the case that you haven't been paired up with anyone. In this case, you would need to wait a little bit longer. And in our grading panel, you will see the breakout of all of the grades you received. So that is all for um, the demo of how the group member evaluation looks like. Um, now I would like to move on to the hands-on part where you will have the chance to go through the same assignment yourself um, and practice uh, how students can give feedback. I will just copy the link that I will share in just a second in the chat. And these are the instructions. We first ask you to click on the link that I just share in the chat, then logging with your student credential. In case you didn't land on the activity itself, you can paste the link in your browser once again, and you can start the assignment. All of the instructions are in the activity itself. So just please follow it and you'll have around 10 minutes to complete it. And in case there are any questions, you cannot access this, please do let us know in the chat. Good luck. This link uh, needs you to sign into Blackboard. So if you are in session in Blackboard, you will be able to go directly to this link. And I saw that already some of you entered the assignment, so that's good to see. Once again, the link to the activity is in the chat. So we ask you to paste it and log in as a student. You might need to repaste the link once again, just to trigger opening of the activity. And all of the instructions are within the activity itself. Amar, thank you. I see that you couldn't open the peer assessment page. Could you please try to reload the, the page? Just reloading the website should trigger it. Thank 
Thank you. And I also see one comment. Um, in case the link takes you to a list of institutions to log in, um, please just re-upload the link and log in with your um, student credentials. For one those... easy way to yeah, one easy way to go there. Just go to the Blackboard, sign in, and there is a course with the name Training October Fourteenth. And if you are not seeing that, you may need to be added to the to, to the course. So that's a possibility. Uh, I hope everyone has been added to the course. Yeah, the, all the participants who registered are, are added to the course. If anyone is having an issue, just send a message, and that's what I'll take care of it. That will help. I might also share my screen briefly and walk you through exactly what you should see on your screen. Um, if the link doesn't work, you can access the link I just shared with you in the chat and you should be able to see a folder training October 14th. And within that uh, folder there's only one activity evaluation of group work and that's the activity we ask you to uh, complete And I see that already 18 of the participants have entered the link. So I think everybody should be almost in. Maybe a couple of people still didn't start. We would like to take three more minutes to complete this assignment. I'm just going to share my screen with um, real-time analytics so we can also see how that looks like um, from instructor perspective while sharing this assignment. And also we can see how many of you already entered this activity. But feel free to keep completing your activity.
We'll take one more minute to complete. As we can see, I think we have around maybe five people that entered this assignment. So it would be great if you can try to access the link once again and get into this activity. I didn't see any additional compilations coming up, so we will move on with showing to you how this assignment looks like from the instructor view. What you currently see is the real-time um, progress uh, from all of you, so we can exactly see which modules have been completed um, and which ones haven't been started. So this is the beginning of our analytics um, that you will be able to see in this assignment that will provide you with very structured um, information uh, where students are at. So I can see that all of my five groups currently sort of try to access this activity. And some of you have read the instructions and a couple of you have given the reviews. I can also reckon that nobody received their reviews just because they're, the group is quite big. So um, it would be more difficult to provide evaluations for everyone. In this panel, I can also see some general analytics such as how many students have completed all of the steps. Mm, as well as the average time spent on writing the evaluations. In case you would like to also have all of these analytics in one place, you can export them in an Excel file that will generate uh, spreadsheets with all of the information uh, covered in this uh, assignment. Now, if I move on further on, um, I can navigate into the given reviews. So really see how my groups performed um, and how basically you scored each other on the given criteria. Since there is quite a lot on the screen, um, I always recommend navigating to the show ratings that will open the hit map. So you can see the visual representation of how you scored uh, other colleagues and we can see all of our criteria here, listening skills, respect for others, and also on which level you scored. So what we can reckon from this is that all of the criteria do quite well, but the self-motivation is doing the best. And that means that most of you scored um, maximum of the points. So it can really provide a quick uh, check-in insight into where the groups stand. I can also compare this view um, with the self-assessment. So they can really provide you with an interesting insights how students help critically evaluate their own contribution. After this, I can move on to uh, looking into my individual students' progress where I can see that some of you have already written um, some reviews, whereas others haven't started. This is a very clear overview. So you know where students are at. And you always have possibility to preview individual progress. 
So if I go into our students that uh, really excel this assignment, I can see what type of ratings they provided to themselves. This is, of course, an individual view, so you don't necessarily have to go into that. It's enough if you only go into the show ratings to see how the group is doing as a whole. This really provides a nice comparison view. I've got one of the questions from you if it's possible to have multiple reviewers, if it's also for an possible for the instructor to evaluate students themselves. And that's possible. If you go to the received reviews panel, you'll be able to then access all of the um, ratings reviews that students wrote to themselves and using the icon in the bottom um, right corner, you can add yourself as a reviewer. This will basically signify to students that um, I'm a separate evaluator and they will also receive um, evaluation from me. So I can go ahead and evaluate students in the same way um, you did. And of course, here comes also the uh, comment um, that's very valuable. I always encourage you to uh, enable writing comments uh, so that students not only receive ratings, but most importantly, a qualitative feedback. And I will be able to communicate with students why I scored a certain level. And I can post a comment in this way. I can, of course, also respond to um, the reviews that students wrote to each other. So, for instance, here I have the self-evaluation. I can write a comment and discuss it with the student. In our case, we don't have a view into this. However, there's also an outlier um, option that I've mentioned at the beginning of the training that enables instructors to spot any possible free riders. In case some of the students were a very um, high performers or maybe didn't contribute enough to their group, I will see a variety of different labels that will help me to uh, basically know what type of dynamics uh, each group had. The last part is the grading. So here I can really see uh, the breakout of the grades and have a bit more um, insights into how students performed. What you are seeing currently are all of the rubrics which were included and the final grade. In our activity, we rate students based on compilation of all of the steps as well as received feedback and reading this feedback. So I can always um, adjust the grade in case maybe I think somebody deserves a bit higher or lower um, grade. I will be able to do that in the tool. Afterwards, in order to um, sync those grades back with Blackboard, all I need to do is click Publish the Grades. Once I publish this, in your assignment, you immediately see the grade you received. Since some of you haven't written any uh, comments or reviews, you might get a zero. I'm sorry for that in advance. It's just for the um, activity for you to see uh, how you scored. And you also see when the last published moment happened. You can also always schedule the publishing grade so you don't have to think about it in advance. Something I don't think any one of you flagged, but in case any comment is inappropriate, a student can always flag a comment. And as an instructor, I can always go ahead and delete some of the comments. We have a comment right here, for instance. I will be able to upvote this, reply, but also in case it's an appropriate delete. When I respond to students, um, both of these students will also get notification and feedback for its assignment so that they get a reminder that something in the assignment uh, happened. So this is how the activity looks like. I now would like to move on to the edit panel of this activity so you also know how to set it up. The edit mode is always present in the top right corner of every activity and every tool and will allow you to modify this assignment. The first part will be instructions where you can demonstrate the value of this activity to students, ensuring that everyone knows uh, what they're expected to do. Below, you can 
adjust the student collaboration. So that will help you with assigning students um, to groups or maybe deciding that this is individual activity because that's also something you can do. Simply evaluate one another and choose which students uh, review each other. Um, and as I've mentioned, you don't create groups in feedback fruits. You only choose the right groups to participate. Moving on, you will see the uh, feedback criteria where you need to choose the rubrics and criteria students will be evaluating each other on. If you don't have concrete rubric at place yet, I suggest you going into the use rubrics from learning design community as you will see a lot of inspiration and already created templates depending on the pedagogy or topic you want to choose. If you want to do it manually, you have three options. You can include rubric, that's the most extensive, um, richest uh, criteria, where you can adjust the levels, descriptions uh, of this assignment. Scale rating that will enable you to basically include from minimum to maximum number of points students received, as well as comment only. I do suggest um, implementing only few criteria or maybe comment criteria only for those classes that are not yet used to group work and evaluating one another. It can really provide a more scaffolded way um, of evaluations and letting students to get used to this process of reviewing. This panel also includes a lot more uh, settings that will help you to structure this assignment, such as uh, including the self-assessment um, or including anonymity. In our activity, we included anonymity. You haven't received any reviews, but if you would, then um, you would only receive them from anonymized peers, so you won't be able to see their name. The instructors, however, can always see the identity of the student in order to respond to them. In the guiding students option, you can also include the AI coach that we included in our assignment that will help students with their writing. In every module, you can also schedule a deadline. In our case, we've opened the deadline for easy access, but you can, of course, also modify when students will have access to each module and until when they need to complete it. And the last part is the grading. By clicking configure, you'll be able to add certain modules and decide what students are being graded on. What's important is that the maximum grade will equal to 100. You can then uh, modify that in Blackboard so that, for instance, our feedback for its assignment um, equals five uh, points in their courses. After you're happy with the execution of this assignment, you can click save. Um, we also provide you with the uh, option to save uh, every single activity as a template, and you can do that by navigating to more options next to the um, edit button. You can then create a template like this. You can just phrase it in a relatable way that you will remember that this is your activity, after which we can save it as a template and easy access it uh, in our Blackboard. If you're also collaborating on an assignment with a colleague, you can send them a template. I'll be able to send it maybe to my colleague yeah. and share a message. They will receive this um, activity in their inbox and will be able to collaborate uh, on this with you. So that is all for the setup. I'm curious to see if there are any questions uh, before we move on to creating an activity in your LMS. I see no questions. I will also make sure to share uh, links and information after the session so that you also have opportunity to review that after this um, workshop. Okay, but in case there are no questions, uh, I would like to move on to the hands-on activity of creating Feedback Fruits assignment. I will just share a brief slide explaining how to do it. I will also go with you step-by-step step in the LMS, but prior to that, if you are able to log in into your sandbox or a course as an instructor this time, please feel free to do so. Um, the premise of this activity is to ensuring that you know where to find feedback for its assignment and save one activity.
So please log in with your instructor, teacher, admin credentials to one of your courses. And in a few moments, we'll guide you how to create the activity in Blackboard. I'm already uh, logged in into uh, your environment and I access one of my courses. Please feel free to do the same. Okay, then I hope uh, some of you had a chance to log in already. Now, once you navigate to your course, any of the courses, you can always find feedback fruits under the build content section. Uh, among many other links, you will find feedback fruits. So you can just click on this and it will immediately open the feedback fruits menu panel where you can choose how you can get started with the activities. Now, depending on whether this is your very first time accessing Feedback Fruits, or if you already done it multiple times, you might see um, less options. In case this is your first time, you will see option Start from Scratch that will enable you to create any activity from zero. And you will be able to see the list of all of the tools that we have uh, shared with you at the beginning of the session. In case this is uh, more than the first time using the assignments, you will also see the option to view my library where you can see all of the templates that you already created. As you can see, this is our uh, activity that I just templated a few minutes ago. So I'll be able to easily access it and reuse it. I can also reuse the templates in another course. The templates are being saved on my account, not in a course. So that would really provide me with benefit to reuse any assess assessments in other courses that I teach. You can also see a past activities module um, where all of your drafts and activities are stored. Uh, in case there is a lot of them, I know that some of you work on feedback fruits intensively. I can also just type um, my assignment and it will filter the name I'm looking for. Now, regardless um, where you would like to, which tool you would like to use, I highly recommend you navigating to learning design community. This should be always your starting point if this is the first time using a, a tool, a new tool specifically, because here you will see a list of all of the tools we've already uh, pre-made settings, um, templates, and rubrics. As we were today focusing on our group member evaluation and group formation, I will navigate to the latter one to show you how you can Create it, and I'm gonna use the search option because I cannot find it. I think. We can also go with the um with the group formation. I know that we also have a nice template for the group formation, but I couldn't find it. In every single template, you'll be able to preview. Uh, the activity. So know what learning steps are included um, mm -hmm. and see if maybe this activity is applicable to you. After this, I can click copy and edit and it will open um, a panel where I can choose my groups. If you don't have your defined groups, you can simply skip that um, and navigate to the activity that already has defined um, title, instructions, added rubrics, configured criteria, and all additional settings. You'll be then able to modify this assignment as you want. Maybe you want to delete some of the rubrics or, del or, or modify them. After this, you can simply save this activity and it's gonna appear at the bottom of your screen in the course folder right here. 
Again, to access feedback fruits, you need to navigate to the build content feedback fruits, and that will already be most of the work done. I'm curious to hear if some of you managed to create an activity, if you have any issues or if you have any questions. Great. I see that there are no questions. Um, can, can we have general questions? General, but not related to this session. Is that yes, possible? Feel free, please feel free to ask general questions okay. as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, we, we used actually the basic one where we put the video for to the student and the and it's fantastic. It's, a, it's something that we are looking for. But um, for life uh, video, you know, sometime we put our student to life that is uh, live in YouTube, whether it's a conference or something else. Do you have a solution for that? Where we can let them go and just at least monitor them and let them put something. So you, are you referring to something like a live seminar, a live presentation, something that's just sort of broadcasted and not necessarily pre-recorded? Yes, this is what I'm referring to. And most of seminars and, and conferences now, they are uh, aired on YouTube. So is there a solution to make sure that, I mean, usually we ask the student to summarize and put on, if you know what I mean, but we would like to use your system. Is there a way around it? Thank you for asking. I must say that this is a request that we haven't gotten often. And currently it's only possible to um, yeah, insert the links that are directed towards already pre-recorded and downloaded materials. So I'm afraid this won't be possible, but thank you for this request. I see Marta is not noting something really <laughs> heavily. So uh, I think it's very valuable uh, um, observation. So we can circle back on this. Thank you. It open a, a new way of business for you because mm -hmm. uh... This is something is needed, really. You know, for the record, we have no problem. Your system is excellent, especially by taking from YouTube or anything else. But sometime we need live session to be looked at. Thanks. Thank you for sharing. It's good to know about this. Yeah, and, and I'm just thinking that maybe oh. something like this is technically possible on YouTube because in the live session, the timeline, you know, it, it keeps the, the, the previous part. So it's not just uh, at the moment, if some part of the recorded session, I mean, live session has passed on, you can move back to it. So there is a timeline there. And uh, so maybe student can, can be asked to link to it and comment on it. So. What we do usually, we, we, we just uh, leave it until when it's done, then we, it's recorded, then we do it in your system. But we don't want to do this. Sometime, like in our classes, we would like them to go live. And we don't need necessarily, of course, create question while it's live, but we need to monitor and make sure that they went through it. So if you have a system that can just monitor and guarantee that they can do it, that's fine. So I also have another question. You recorded the session. Whenever we do it for the student, if the students just see a little part, like two or three minutes, that's mean they've seen it. Is there a way to go around this and make sure that they see the whole um, video? Because this is, you know, to some extent, it's a little bit um, difficult because when students just watch five minutes, but it's still running for 30 minutes, there is no way to guarantee that they did. Just want to yeah. hear your answer on this. Yes, thank you for, for asking. There is a, one trick that you can do, and this is to implement a locked question at the end of the video. And that will ensure that students provide an answer. If they don't provide an answer, you know that they haven't looked into the question, therefore that they haven't uh, viewed the entire video. So you have an option to implement a question or a discussion that you can lock. Um, and if you see students answer it in the analytics panel, then you know that they have actually completed that this is a workaround that we use with water instruction with instructors. Yeah, but is there a technology or a way to know? Because I, I'll give you an example. If we have a two-hour session and we put four questions, 
somewhere in the middle, one at the end. Students could jump to each of the question and just answer. You know, in the middle, there is a part that is need to be monitored. Is there a way your system and in, in, in technology could do this? Currently not. Currently, we have to include those uh, additional questions, but uh, that's something also we hear quite often from, from other instructors. Yeah, I so. don't think it is possible because even if they just keep running it, it's not necessary that they are really, you know, like listening to it. So that mm -hmm. challenge always stays there, you know. Yeah, I, no... exactly. I was going to ask um, or going to suggest that something we could do in the analytics is um, provide maybe um, the time that the student has been in the activity. But as uh, Junaid uh, already mentioned, that might not, yeah, it might just be that the, the student plays this uh, on mute on his um, laptop or computer without actually watching it so that's also a bit uh, misleading in that sense so yeah it would be good if if you maybe have suggestions on what data would help you to yeah give you the sense that they have actually uh went through the entire video even um, that, if you if you can if you can guarantee, even if they are not listening, it's running all the through, it will be fine. But now your system does not, and your system actually, if the student run it for one minute and it's a twenty minute session, yeah. it will give him the full grade for 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 seeing. And this is what I wanted. Okay, it's true. Sometimes, but our student will will do if we if we put it that way. You know, now it's a secret for them, but mm -hmm. later on they will know that. They just watch a little part. Um, it's already yes. they get. So is there a way, maybe through artificial intelligence, you can work this out? Yeah, I'm sure there there is a a, a way for it. Um, so yeah, thank thank you for your suggestion. I I will pass it on to our product team, and um, so, uh, yeah, we can circle back on it. Yeah, excuse me. Uh, uh, may I suggest uh, something? Uh, yeah, I am Dr. Amir from Mechanical Engineering. Uh, uh, so one way, maybe, uh, uh, usually what we do for the self-reading assignments, we put question cards in the in the video or in the audio, right? So is there a way we put some question cards, but students don't know where are the question cards? I mean, after one minute or two minutes or three minutes in a four-minute video. So in that case, maybe they need to watch the whole video and even find out those question cards for answer. Uh, so uh, this could be one way to uh, engage the students in a more effective way. So, yeah, so you, you're talking about actually hiding the discussion cards or threads or the question cards on the timeline. So that, yes. yeah. I, I do like that suggestion as a kind of a, an answer to this problem. So um, I suggest to, to take this offline so we can uh, finalize this session and uh, we will get back to you. We will talk to our product team and uh, uh, highlight your concerns with regards to jumping in the video and students only having to watch um, a short time. And then we can think about what would be a good... Um, yeah solution to this uh to this problem thank you for that yeah thank you so much for sharing this we'll we'll definitely stay in touch for those interested in this tool i just wanted to mention what was just discussed the questions that came in were about the interactive video and that will provide you with the option to basically include um any type of recording seminar session that you can share with students based on which they can go inside and answer questions so if you're interested in implementing it you will see it in your uh, blackboard environment um, that is all for today's session thank you so much for your participation we will ensure that you will receive um, the information about the tools and we look forward to see you in the next sessions thank you so much Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for joining. So the time is up, and I hope uh, this was helpful. And more people are going to use these tools. There are quite a lot of tools. I'm sure 
something makes sense within your course. So please give these tools a try. So have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.